let's talk about one of the most exciting things Unreal 5.4 added, and that is modular control rigs. And why do I think that's exciting? Because I wasted so much time over the last half a year rigging and animating characters, which could have been so much smoother if I just waited for it a little bit. Let's talk about Unreal Engine's new updates to control rigs. It is, quite frankly, actually amazing. So we can still make the normal control rigs, which we have here uh, for whatever you want, you know this interface, it's very easy. But when you want to make one of those, uh, you now also get the option to make a modular control rig. So in animation control rig, when you make control rig, you now get this little dialog box uh, choosing between a control rig, which is just the good old stuff we know about, or a modular rig, which is what it sounds like. It is a modular rig. So let's make a quick modular rig for the uh, mannequin in Unreal. We have a preview mesh, up here that we can choose uh, what mesh this control rig is going to be applying to. So we're going to go for uh, the Quinn model because just the default. And there it will uh, pick the root bone and from there you're going to be building your control rig with these modules. I should note that you can very much make your own modules. If you want to make a custom module, the way you do that is you just pick a normal control rig and you go up here to switch rig to module. And if we do that and we compile and save, coming in here, we now have uh, the module that we just made, Quinn. Uh, it doesn't do anything because we didn't program anything into it as one of the modules uh, that we can use. So that is quite neat. Uh, again, it doesn't do anything because we didn't program anything in there and we're not going to in this video. We're going to go through the entire process of rigging up this normal humanoid character here, which usually would take out an hour, about an hour, an hour and a half maybe, uh, maybe a little bit less if you're very used to it. Uh, but now it's literally a matter of minutes because we can just say, hey, spine, bam, there we have a spine. Shoulders, let's put the shoulders onto the shoulders, just like that. Then we can say, hey, uh, we want to go ahead and uh, where are the arms? arms you put those onto the hand bone so that it knows okay so that's where the shoulder ends from there this is where the arm ends and we do it on the other side too so it adds uh, forward and inverse kinematic controls we'll show you in a minute uh, about switching between the two of them because it implements all of that for you which by the way is also a very good opportunity because we now have these modules uh you can just double click on them they are just control rigs at the end of the day and it shows you how they are set up so there's also a good way of like looking into okay so how do i set up a fk ik switching i would personally probably prefer to make it a blending system rather than a switching system but hey what do i know anyway let's keep going uh we can add the legs here so it'll add legs which by default are set to ik because of course they are and then if we want to uh we can also add controllers here for the feet and we have a controller for the neck, which will do the head, which also has both FK and IK controls. And we could do all these fingers individually as well, because it does have a uh, finger module. I think you kind of get the point. We're not going to be animating these fingers. But just like that, we now have a fully functional humanoid control rig. And if you have a character with four arms, that's uh, not going to be a problem, uh, because if... The end of your spine has four child bones. It's going to just give you the four bones uh, as slots to put arm modules in. And suddenly now you have four arms. So it's not even just a default rig that you can retarget your model to. It is actually modular. If you're making a spider, well, spider legs move differently from human legs. But if you're making a character which has eight human legs, it's spider-like right? You can just add a leg modules and you'll be good to go. So uh, this actually is very modular. And again, if you need something that's not here, you can very easily make your own modules just like you would in a normal control rig. They just need to be like programmed a little bit deeper than you might usually do because they need to be modular. Anyway, with all that compiled, uh, we can now very simply uh, drag this into the scene. As you could see, I was playing around with it beforehand, and it just gives us the entire control rig. So uh, we can say, hey, we want to uh, move around the hips, and we have the feet IK already in place. Uh, but by default, you can see the arms actually use forward kinematics, which might not be always ideal to what you want to do. So 
if we just search tracks uh, for IK, in the global control, which is just a set of variables uh, for this IK rig, we can see, uh, okay, we have these switches. So we can switch the spine FK, IK, uh, which will now let us, for instance, say, use potentially inverse kinematics on the spine. But for the neck, for instance, we also uh, can do a little bit of that, which again, I don't think it's particularly useful for what we're doing right here. Uh, but the arms, we can just switch them over, and you can see the controls actually switch around. So now we have the IK controls. Now, because these are bulls, uh, if you switch them off, they will just snap back to their FK controls, which is a little bit annoying. Again, that's why I personally would prefer a blending system, because then you can actually use both of them inside one animation more easily. Uh, as it stands with these modules, it seems like you're probably better off choosing, okay, for this specific animation sequence, I want FK, and for this specific animation sequence, I want IK. Moving between the two of them is a little bit bothersome, uh, as it stands right now, seemingly. But far be it from me to complain about this modular system. I've been recording for nine minutes, which means that this video is probably like six minutes long at this point. Uh, and we have a fully functional, we are like in a timeline animating and posing this character. At the start of the video, all of this wasn't there yet. That's how quickly we can do this now. So all the issues I have are pretty nitpicky uh, in the grand scheme of things with how amazingly fast and versatile this will be. I will be using this a lot. And a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas, 